called Scripps and they brought in a top neurosurgeon not knowing who Bob was. I was one of the first called. There were three people called immediately and I was one of them. I called our agent, Jillian Manis, who's the most connected woman in the world. So 600 million of Daniel Steele's books, John Grisham, John Gray. Her husband's a guy who funded a little company called AOL. There's no one that she doesn't know. She ran a whole female campaign for Schwarzenegger. I said, Jillian, there's a problem. She had her four kids in the car. She said, let me pull over. They've got a golf stream. She said, I'll send it down. I said, no. Daryl, Bob's wife, said that we got the best neurosurgeon and there's only three good trauma centers in California. The one where I'm at at Hogue, the one at Scripps where he's at, and Stanford where you're at. Sit tight. If we need that, we'll do it. We had angel after angel after angel. Bob was in a coma for a week. Then he was aphasic for another two weeks, which means we don't know if the inbound or outbound communications work. Before we'd started, my attorney, who's right here in L.A., Bob and I went and saw him, and we signed the four Ds, death, disability, divorce, and dysfunctionality. See, most of you, when you put together your team, think, well, we're 50-50. There's no such thing as 50-50 partnerships. There never has been, not in marriage, not in business, not in life, not in church. They don't exist. It's 99 60 Am I right, John Gardner? I mean, you're an attorney with one of the biggest law practices in the world. doesn't exist. Well, now suddenly my partner's out of business, and it's 100-0. But we signed the agreement that the other guy would have full authorization to do whatever it took. That's being vulnerable. There's not one of you that's not paying attention, because when you tell a story of where you're weak, or where you have pain, or where you've come through a problem, that anyone will miss it. As what Nito talked about, Go beyond communicating. Go to connecting. Go heart to heart. Soul to soul. Build a database. Is that the greatest picture? <laughs> Start from day one. Everyone say, I'm building a database starting today. Everyone, I'm. And write a goal. When you're writing your 101 goals, why not write down that you're going to have a million name database that knows you? And some of you are still wiping tears. It, when we, by the way, the only company we've never been able to get a deal with, by the way, we, we're, we're partners with Campbell Soup. As you know, we were on 400 million Campbell Soup cans two years ago on May 17th. And it, 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 you opened up the label, and it had an accordion threefold with all of our stories in it. And it said, take a can of non-perishable food stuff, i.e. Campbell Soup, because it's mm-mm. To your local bookstore on May 17th, the post office will pick it up. Campbell's will double it. And for one year, because I wrote down an outrageous goal, we fed 15 million people in America at every Union Rescue Mission here in L.A., all the second harvests, all because I had this big, hairy, audacious goal that we could do in Jackson. I don't know if you can really do that, but we'll try. <laughs> See, I say America is the greatest country in the world for one reason above all other, and Ian, who is from Scotland and England and is a great realtor and flies here all the time. Stand up, Ian. Let him give you a round of applause. But he would tell you about what I'm going to tell you. I love this guy. Isn't he cute? He looks like Andrew Carnegie to me. He's just such a great friend. You know, and he wants all of you to come and visit. Is that true? <laughs> At their own expense. <laughs> but he says that America's the greatest country because we're the givingest country. When the yogurt hits a fan in Europe, we go there. Do they come here? Go like this. When in Taiwan, they had a 7.8 earthquake, the prime minister called me up and said, I need you to come. I'd just been there, and he'd heard me with 3,500 people. And I said, I'm not coming. That's 15 time zone changes, and i got four days to do it, and it'll kill me. I didn't want to do that. Called seven times. I turned him down. He finally calls my little daughter and says, Melanie, I've listened to every one of your daddy's tapes, and my daughter's the same age as you, and you and she are going to become great friends. I went to Northwestern University, and what I need you to know is I need your dad. Your dad said somebody Chinese should do it, but nobody Chinese can do it. And you're going to talk at your family meeting tonight, and you're going to get your dad to come, aren't you? She said, Dad, if he needs you that much, you're going. I mean, when your own kids are closing you, it's pretty hard not to go. <laughs> you all are going to get some opportunities that you don't feel equal to. 
Thank God Bill Clinton had gone through the yogurt so hard in a fan and written speeches. I collected all of his speeches before I went over and read and just edited it into something that would work. Because when I got to the prime minister, it got me straight through customs. They had every piece of media available because these people lost 100,000 homes in a half minute, 485 lives. And this guy had already built 10,000 homes in a month. And I said, the worse mother nature is, the better human nature is. And it went on from there. And Chiang Kai-shek's temple with him. And the guy's totally disaster burned out. I mean, after you've had a terrible, traumatic experience where most people are out of work and it's Christmas time. And as you know, they've gone from doing toys to um, doing motherboards and shoes. And um, they didn't know if they were going to deliver anything because the people were traumatized. They were scared. I get done at Chiang Kai-shek's temple, which was an extraordinary experience for me. I go back to the Hyatt and I'm at the top. Because they wouldn't let me be in the bottom because when they came in, they said, look, we have rolling earthquakes in California. Here we have shifting, so we're going to lose the first floor, then the second floor, then the third floor. Well, I've got this nine-foot green marble desk, and in physics they teach that what, during an earthquake, glass does not shatter, but first it starts to melt. And the shadows are coming in way wrong as I'm writing notes on what the prime minister has talked to me about and all the TV interviews I've done, and I'm thinking... Oh, my God, I go under the table. I immediately go in the hallway, which is as thin as maybe three feet across and hold up because that building started moving six feet back and forth, and I'm at the top and think I'm going to be a projectile. You're going to get to do some stuff you could talk about if you speak. (laughs) You've got to have two kind of databases. You've got to have a consumer database to be able to buy from you. And David Cooper is one of the best at that. How many people you talk to, David? A million what? 1,093,000. 1,093,000. The guy's kept, and he's got them in his database. Have a commercial database. This is what Stedman is wanting to partner with me on. How do you do an institutional database where you go through the schools, through the municipalities, through the communities? You can do both. Marketing is reaching out to people and bringing them into your client base. Creating a relationship that provides products and services that they need and want and will buy and pay for that will make their life infinitely better off. Everyone say infinitely better off. And what I want you to do is really get what Bob and I, from our hearts to yours, are trying to teach you. You've got to have residual income. Everyone say residual income. That means you work once. Jack and I worked three and a half year, three years on chicken, 24-7. But we've gotten paid just in America 82 million times. We've sold 5 million greeting cards a year. We've sold 897,000 record albums with Rhino Record. It goes on and on. We've got 39 number one licenses. Why? Because I said you learn the business, own the business, just like Nito was saying. And, and Nito called it creating a fiscal legacy, which was great. Lead generation starts with a product. And, and remember, we're building, Bob taught you, build systems. What do you build? Bob and I have trademarked the word system. It means save yourself time, energy, and money. Save yourself time, energy, and money. Everyone say it, please. Save yourself and the best systems producer was the guy we had consult us, Marshall Thurber, who had been on the staff with me at Bucky Fuller's office, the only guy with a 300 IQ, made so much money with Hawthorne Stone. His secretary was making $142,000 $142, a year, you know, 30 years ago. Then he went with Deming to Japan, and Deming finished Toyota, but he took Toyota and made it into Lexus because he made it a system. How do you make the finest car in the world? Now, I've owned Rolls Royces, but I like Lexus better. It just is better. And I'm not trying to sell Lexus. Multi-day seminar, niche book camp. There's so much that you can do. Everyone says, I got, I got stuff in me to do. Everyone touch yourself. Say, please, I got. I got great potential. Everyone? Gently nudge your neighbor and say, you got great potential. <laughs> Become a master at self-promotion. Everyone say, I like promoting me. Everyone, I. Now, when you go into those deep, innermost, highermost visualizations and you tilt your inner eyes up at a 45, you see yourself promoting effortlessly. Make it joyous. Make it happy. At lunch, Cynthia Cynthia and I just went around and we tapped all my friends for money. I went up to Jill and I said, Jill, I want 10000 from you. And how much can you raise for Habitat? You're up in Canada. He's one of God's great frozen people. I mean, we ski at Timmins together. How much did you say you'd raise for us? Fifty, right? And I want the rest of you to, you don't have to believe you can do it. All you've got to believe is that Cynthia and I believe you can do it, and then you can do it. Everyone say, I can do it. 
Become a student of current trends. Now, this week, Bob and I are talking to 17,000 people with Arnold Schwarzenegger at the Women's Governors Conference here in L.A. It's sold out. All the leaders. We're going to try to turn around the state of California from the women first. Now, now, whether you like Arnold or not is not the thing, but we've got to look at as the guy's a visionary leader. When I had dinner with him six weeks ago, he said, look, I'm worth a half billion dollars. I can't run for president. I've got no vested interests. California has been really good to me. I basically own Santa Monica, and what I want to do is turn this state around. And then you saw him on TV, and he paid $1 to the richest man in America right now, Warren Buffett, the value investor who took Goldman Sachs from $500 billion upside down in one year and made it into straight-level flight and profitable again. He said, I'm going to do that in this state with no new taxes. Now, remember, crisis equals Opportunity. I'm apolitical, basically, but there's some trouble we have in California. We've got 33 million people. We've got a great state. If we're a country, we'd be the fourth or fifth biggest economy in the world. We need to turn this state around. The answer is, yeah. What's going to happen is you're going to see a coalition of people here, and that coalition is going to go around America. And in chiropractic, what Fab Mancini, Dr. Mancini is going to do is do the same thing and wrap around the world because he comes from Colombia, speaks eloquent Spanish. He's going to go through the 500 million Latinos, and he's going to wake them all up. He's going to put his university and extend it, and I'm going to help him. Is that true, Fab? Give him a round of applause. Please take, take a bow, Fab. Stand up and take a bow. Because the guy's willing to promote. Get massive value for your clients. Get testimonials. You saw one read by our buddy Tommy today. Get a positive image and reputation. Right? Do some stuff. Publish. Self-publish if you can't get published by somebody else. Quality presentations, visuals, handouts. I have a lady in the back. Lisa Williams helps me, as does uh, Jody, to do my visuals and bring them up. But today we also have a lady, uh, Donna Donetta. Are you back there, Donna, somewhere? Give her a round of applause. This lovely lady in turquoise back there is blonde. She helped make these better. Because there's always somebody that will help if you ASK. Everyone say, I'm willing to ask. Everyone? I mean, on Friday night I said, get our Aladdin tapes and listen to them. And I still believe they're the finest thing to transform you into a master asker. One of the tapes I'm working on now is called Brand to Command because everybody has a piece of market share. And there's always somebody number one in any market. But first of all, you brand yourself. Everyone say, I'm branding me. And I told you about uh, when I interviewed last Monday night, Sherry Grenadier about uh, marketing, right? Sherry only does soybeans, wrote the book on soybeans, owned 11 health studios, and did recipes, and did soybeans. And then uh, she started having people pay her she gets paid $10,000 to do a talk on soybeans, how they end breast cancer, how they end testicular cancer. And then they said, look, Sherry, we want you to rep our product, Silk, which is soy milk. We want you to represent our product, uh, Light Bite Bars. She goes on QVC, sells 500000 in a few minutes at thirty nine ninety five. And she got 10% of everything sold. I think it, whatever that comes out, it's a pretty big fortune. Now she's on QVC here and in Canada once a week and in QVC England once a month. Is that good or is that good? Then she's got a breast augmentation soybean drink that in three months takes a woman's breast from a C cup. No, from, from an A cup to a C cup. <laughs> yeah, I keep that up. I'm going to be extinct. <laughs> this is from our friend Tom Peters who says, B does stink to be extinct. you got to have a USP, a unique selling proposition. Now you also have to have a VSP, a visual sales proposition, and the ESP, like um, our friends at Virginia, Victoria's Secret, uh, an emotional sales proposition. E, uh, but when you absolutely positively want it delivered overnight, you call everyone FedEx. When you care enough, you send the very... And Hallmark sells with chicken soupy stories. We're trying to do something with them right now. Hot, fresh pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less. Earth's biggest bookstore. Amazon. Write your own USP. Here is my USP. Inspires new vision that generates innovation, productivity, and profitability. You've got to write your own USP. The rule of seven, though, is you do seven marketing things every day. How many every day? You do them no matter what. If you miss seven today, how many you got to do on Tuesday? Fourteen. Right. <laughs> So 90% of whether we cut it or not is whether you decide that you're going to be good at marketing, good at selling, good at self-promotion. Everyone say, I love to self-promote. Everyone? 
good at advertising and creating new business. And there's going to be new advertising within, by January, most of us are going to be able to do narrowcast video that you make on your own little $100 CAD cam on your um, computer, and then you're going to get the email videos to people selling them your books and all that. And have asked to te- have me be the front-end test of that, and you'll be the first to know about it because you're going to be getting it starting in January. Is that cool or is that cool? Kara, are you in the room right now? Just come up here quick. Kara, quickly, thank you. Did you say that? Pax, stand up quick. Stand up quick. Pax had a heart attack. Come up here. Jump up here. You're stronger than hell. Get up here. Tell them how young you are real quick. Uh, I'll be 74 in about 45 days. And when you had your heart attack, you're in cruddy shape. And now flex for the team, would you? No, not no flex. Not bent over. Now, were you lifting weights before? I started at 53. Okay. And if everyone stays healthy like you, they should be able to live to 100. Is that correct? 110. 110. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Tell them how old you are. I'm 27 now. And how long have you been talking? I've been speaking for nine years since I left high school. And why do you talk? Um, My twin sister was killed in a car crash this summer of our graduation. And I started speaking about grief and risk-taking. And it was a car crash that I was a witness to the whole thing. So brought me into speaking about um, making good choices behind the wheel of vehicles, how kids think they're very invincible and that they're supposed to grow old like their teachers and parents do. And uh, I say that right up front. Like, I'm not here to nag. Your parents and teachers do enough of that. And the reason we all do that as adults is we want you to get old. And we had at least six parents come up to me and tell me spontaneously that I didn't know Kara's story, that their kids have died in auto accidents. I've introduced every one of them to Kara. And the book that your mom reads is? Um, My mom, two years after my twin sister was killed, my mom is also a twin, multiple birth problem in my family, um, wanted to kill herself. Are you going to have any kids? Are you going to have quadruplets all at once? Yeah, all all at one time, did over with. So you can have a womb with a view? Yeah. And and womb mates. Lots of room for that. Um, My mom was hospitalized, wanted to kill herself after my twin sister was killed. As uh, any parent's worst nightmare, you don't want to lose a child. And uh, none of us wanted to lose my sister. And she was older by 39 seconds and the more powerful twin. Um, People find that a little weird with knowing me now personally, but my mom was hospitalized, wanted to kill herself, and I gave her a chicken soup for the grieving soul book. And it's the only reason my family is still healthy and my mom is still here. And I wanted to share that with Mark and uh, all of you. So we're going to do a lot of stuff. Stay, 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 stay. Isn't she beautiful? I just, I'm so in adoration. From Canada as, as well, thing. for the 15 people in here from Canada. So, yeah. You got Grown a big book. in Canada. Now, tell them who you're talking to. Um, I speak to high school students, primarily grade 9 through 12, freshmen through the seniors, and I've spoken to 700,000 students now in four countries. Say the number again. 700,000 students. One more time, four. just for fun. It's 700,000 students and in how do they four countries. You? Um, I have 10,000 emails. Um, from students who say, and it's not even just a safety message, it's more about making the right choice and uh, peer pressure. The most powerful drugs on the planet are not something you can purchase. Peer pressure and testosterone are more powerful than any drug a high school kid will ever get their hands on. And they deal with it more frequently in high schools. Uh, I'll hit a million people in the next two years, and I'm very excited about that. Now, I also told her I don't want her only to talk to high schools. I also introduced her to Melanchek because I want you to talk at colleges, and then I want you to talk to parents and i want fab you're bringing her into the school is that correct yeah see so we got you a talk and he'll even pay you that'd be great i don't mind how what do you charge um well i've doubled my fee since friday afternoon um, <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Um, and it's funny because there are several speakers on stage who spoke about the fact that chief speakers people meeting organizers believe they will get not as much value or a cheap speaker I am no longer a cheap speaker. I am a less expensive speaker than some other people. Um, but uh, I'm going to, $1,500 U.S. a pop from this day forward, no more. And no. you're going to start writing books, yeah. doing easings, yeah. making tapes, yeah. doing teleconferences. Yeah. Because the kids that can't get there, what I've been doing is I've been twisting her arm because you've got to have, what did we say, marketing, just yeah. one slide ago, you've got to have the outreach, keep, take your hand, say it's going to keep outreaching and outreaching and outreaching and outreaching and outreaching. Yeah, 
What else are you going to do? Um, I definitely want to do the whole book and very much empower young women. Um, as a female, young speaker, there is very few of us out there in the high school market. And I pride myself and it will girl power all the way because they, unfortunately, and I as a girl was also told that I would not accomplish things because I was a girl. I played on my guys' football team in my high school. Do not tell me what I cannot do because I'm a girl. Get down, girl. So, You're unstoppable. But now, real quick, what do we do about the two issues that testosterone and the other, what are we going to do about those? What are we going to do about them? Yeah, what do you tell the kids to do? I talk about options, how to party safely if they choose to. There are things in life that they want to experience because everyone else does. And if they are going to experience, this is how you get yourself home safe. This is how you pick up the phone and call your parents, even though you may have fibbed them and told them you were at a best friend's house sleeping over working on some school projects. Um, they want you to come home in one piece. The last thing my parents and any of you as parents in this room ever want is a knock on the door in the middle of the night and have a uniformed police officer standing there and telling your kid, you as a parent, your children are not coming home. I don't want any of you in this room to ever have to go through that again. But I know that there are some people in this room that have. And as a society, and I say this in every presentation I've ever done in seven years, um, as a society, the only words we have left to say, if you've lost someone, is how sorry we are. It doesn't count for enough. We can change all of that and be proactive in the process. And I'm looking forward to doing all the things that I have planned for you. Good, good, us, good. So. Now, tell them you're easing, and we'll give her a standing ovation. You're easing in your phone number quick. Your address. Your oh, carajohnson.com. Care with a C. Johnston, I'll be living in Newport Beach by the end you're of January. Down. Oh, bless your heart. Welcome I've got forward. my immigration process and with a lawyer right now. Jimmy, you get her a house. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk. Jim Wilson. TaraJohnston.com, my phone number, area code 604 839 8125. Give and her a standing ovation. I think she's doing a noble work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you told me you can't get paid for doing something important. Is she doing something important? The only thing I want to do is clone her. I mean, you know, I think every kid needs to see her. And I said, look, you've got to videotape this, and we've got to get to every kid, including my own. I will make sure that my own daughters, even the 18-year-old who knows absolutely everything about the universe and is so glad to tell me. <laughs> okay, we're back to work. Everyone breathe deep into your solar plexus. Say, I'm back. Write down these three things, please. You want to know the ten reasons why you are a good speaker. How do you get them? You ask all your clients. You ask all your friends. You ask those who love you because what this is is benefit statements. In a life insurance business, we write out ten reasons to buy life insurance, whatever it is. And then you have the client highlight whichever one they want to buy. Sell them what they want. Is that right, Paul? You don't sell them what they need. You sell them what they want and then give them what they need. So you write down ten reasons why you're a good spirit. Ten reasons why the sponsor or client is going to benefit from you. Ten reasons why the client or sponsor is going to benefit. Sponsors will pay a fortune. We've got Walmart willing to pay a fortune to bring three of us around and we'll have ten or 20,000 people at a meeting in a short time because Walmart's got the power. we got the power, right? Ten reasons why the audience will benefit. Ten reasons why the audience will benefit. As long as we got your email, we'll email you mine, but we're not going to go through them right now because we don't have time to do that. Pick a niche that will pay. We're going to have my mentor up here in a few minutes, and you'll get to see he has penetrated the real estate market in his market. When he and I met, he said, I'm doing real estate. You do the life insurance business. It's a bottomless pit for motivation. It cannot be penetrated because it's... The rollover is 90 to 95 percent a year. You can do direct selling and network marketing. We've got a lot of those people in the room. We've got national associations and you've got charities. Because we're teaching residual philanthropy in our book, One Minute Millionaire, which I hope all of you have read at least three or four times. Like I read Think Grow Rich 200 times, but we think we stand on the shoulder of Napoleon Hill, who I totally love and appreciate. But charities need help right now because we've had... We've been hit in the solar plexus, like I said in the beginning, so hard in the last two and a half years. Who can help them? You can. And it, all it takes is one idea. Hold up one finger. How many ideas? Our hero is Paul Newman. He starts a little thing called Newman's Own, and now he's given $125 million to charity. Oprah is always tithed. Says, my God, if you did that, I can do that. Everyone say, if he can do it, I can do it. Everyone, if. So what is she doing? She's starting 
a cosmetics company that 100% of the profits are going to go to charity. Bob and I are creating a way for, to create a million millionaires that I'll give a million back to their charity a million times a million is a trillion. And we're doing a lot of residual philanthropies for the stuff that we believe in. And we're doing a lot of stuff with Habitat as one of the many examples and Horatio and all kinds of stuff. Pick niches. Here's a niche that most of you wouldn't think of. Joe Polish is a guy with a sixth grade education, is a carpet cleaner, gets under a few of us. Here's myself. Here's Dan Kennedy. Here's a few of us. Said, my God, I could make a fortune just teaching carpet cleaners how to clean carpet. Has weekly telephone calls with us. Then he transcribes it into a tape, charges him $10,000. What's the point? He's conquered a niche and is making $7 million a year just talking to carpet cleaners. The big point is there's 37,000 niches, industries in America. There's one that's perfect, right, easy for you to penetrate, penetrate, penetrate. Do total market penetration. Don't take a little of it. Take the whole market. You start with a little market. You take the whole market. Sonia, are you listening? You take the whole market, and then you jump to the next market. At one time, there was nobody in life insurance that didn't know me. Right now, in chiropractic fab, is there anyone that probably doesn't know me? Out of 60,000 doctors. Why? Because three years ago, when I was a spokesperson for the Red Cross, Lenny Dole was running it still. We're out of blood. I'm, a, I'm the spokesperson with Lisa Gibbons, who I love, and William Shatner, who I think the world of. And she said, we're out of blood, and there's no way to get enough blood, and we're 330,000 pines short. I said, I'll get it in a week. She said, how can you do it? I know everything about getting blood, and you don't know anything, and you can get it in a week? I said, I can get it in a week. That's why you're good, because you can come up with new ideas, because you're not in the industry. You see stuff they can't see. I did an information blast to all the chiropractors. Dr. Sean was one of them. They all brought in 100 patients. They invited the patients to bring in 100 friends. They called 800 Give Light. We had all the blood in one week. It was like that. Click your fingers like that. You do that in an industry, and you do something that you don't get paid for in the industry. I mean, Tom brought in 100, Dr. Tom brought in 100 patients. Nothing to it. Now, did, I, I was scared. I didn't know if it would really work, but I thought it would work, and it worked. Thank God it worked. <laughs> if you want to read about it, you can go to my website, markvictorhanson.com, download free. I, I wrote a whole long article, Idea Tithing, which gives you 12 things I'd like you to do. Idea Tithing. Record every talk. How many talks are you going to record? Kara, have you been recording every talk? You're going to. Why? Because the ones that sparkle, the ones that sing, the ones that dance, the ones that move your soul are the ones that you sell. You want you at your best out in the market, but you want you out in the market because if they don't have a chance to buy you, they can't share you and give you away. Average chicken soup book generates five gift books here in this country. In India, it generates 12. Same thing with good tapes. A lot of you said, man, I, somebody gave me your tape at a garage sale or whatever you said to get here. I don't care how you got here. You listen with a multimodal tape. Now, when you get more money, you videotape it, you audio tape it. You know, at professional things like this, every one of the presenters here gets the whole kit when we're done. We give them audios, we give them videos. And by the way, if you want this stuff live, you get it from Barry Ackerman outside. And if, you know, you're here in California, you have Barry tape you. On videotape, you have Richard Greninger tape you. Richard, stand up quick in the back. Give him another round of applause for doing just an absolutely super job with he and his whole team that all deserves applause. Thank every one of them, if you would, please. Interview the superstars. Can you do this? The answer is... Every superstar sooner or later writes a book, which means they got to output media, which all you got to do is call their media people, which are all available to you, and you can get them to do an interview. Now, when you do the interview, you can get with anyone. I even do dead people. <laughs> That's George Washington. He and I were at the Horatio Algier Awards together, and I asked him, were you really the biggest landowner in America? And he said, yeah, it was hard to get people to pay rent back then. No. And we had a great time. There's nobody you can't interview, so you don't have to be an expert, we said on Friday night. You can hire the expert, borrow the expert, and they'll do it for free. They'll do it by telephone. When you do the telephone seminar, you tape it, and then you put it into a thing. But you all have been given our agreements and our contracts that you've got in your package from me already exactly what you need. You can start tomorrow. You can start tomorrow. It's not just for James Malinchek to leave this meeting and make 12000 in 12 days. Everyone say, I can do it. Malinchek, are you still in the room? He was standing in the back in a minute. Didn't he, how many of you were in Melichek seminar this morning? Did he wow your soul? He's going to be General Assembly next year. Some of you that want to talk on these things, you get to do the breakouts. And if you do good in the breakouts and sell a lot, because I take half of whatever you sell, then you get the main platform. 
I want you to understand that these guys all have to produce or they don't get to come back. Because what did our friend Nito say? It's not how nice you are. It's not how hard you try. It's did you get R-E-S-U-L-T-S called? So you go, I couldn't do that five years ago. Bob Allen could not sell from a platform. He hired John Childers. Childers, are you still in the room? He was here a minute ago. Anyhow, where are you? Come up here as fast as you can, Childers. Give that boy a round of applause because I just, I love. Go, and he deserves it. I love this guy. When, he's the best. You may be seated. When Bob had his accident, you know, and I knew Bob was dysfunctional for a while, the first guy I called was Childers, and I said, look, I need you to score for Bob. Will you score for Bob? And you said, absolutely. Tell them about back in the prehistoric days when you talked for Bob. How much did you make a year working for Bob? Yeah, I made uh, the best year I made around eight hundred and thirty-two thousand six hundred and seventy-four dollars and <laughs> And Bob gladly paid that because I was on 8% commission. Now, remember when I said to you, how many of you give me a dollar if I give you 10? Bob took me up on that. <laughs> how did Bob find you? I was a student of Bob Allen's. That's the way most people, that happens out here is when you reach out and you help someone else, they become devoted. I was a devoted follower of Robert Allen. I ran his investment clubs for three years, never made a dime. But I got up there every month, and I would pour my heart out teaching new strategies. And I had a little gimmick here. Can I film it? Yeah. Bob would send the tape of the month, and I'm supposed to play it at the meetings. But no, I would play it at home, and then I'd go to the meeting, and I'd teach that strategy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you, when you help enough people, they'll help you and to get what you want. And uh, Bob was a mentor to me for years and years. He gave me my first start. As a public speaker, uh, Mark has been, this is the most influential man I've ever met in my life. Would you all agree with me on that? And if you had the ability to meet the people that he knows, there's no stopping anybody in this room. Because it's not who you know that counts. It's who knows you. One and more Go ahead. You want to say one more thing, and then I got a question to ask, and we'll let you. No, I'm through talking. I'm just. What's the question? How do all of them get to do the ones that want to sell for somebody else rather than to create their own product? How do they get to do that? Well, if you see, I didn't have a product, so I just wanted to find someone who had a product that I believed in. Bob had that, and if you know the right people, or know the people that can point you to the right people, and you can sell. See, there's a, there's a model to selling. And when you learn that model, you can put anybody's product in that model and you can sell. And once you know how to sell something from the platform, you will join the ranks of the highest paying profession in the world. Give him a round of applause. Thanks, John. Create irresistible products. Everyone say irresistible products. That are complementary to each other, and, and I violate this, but make sure at the end of every year product, it sells all your other products. Point at your temples, go, hmm, that's interesting. And it's got to sell into the next big thing. What's it got to sell into? The next? Now, do you think I'm going to sell you into something big from here? Go like this? Of course. Do you all want to know the big secret? You don't want it? I'll just have Richard go over it. Wait a second. Do you want the big secret? Yes. People don't want books, tapes, videos, courses, and information. They want toolkits and systems. Everyone say toolkits and systems. I told you Susie Orman is the hottest thing going on PBS. I'm modeling Susie. She's, we have the same attorney. I've never met her. But what does she do? She says, here's my estate program. I've taken out the numbers on my program. You just fill in your number, and you have your trust all set to rock. It's got to be packed with already done for you. Fill in the blank. Ready to use. Zero thinking. Zero thinking. What do you got to do? How much thinking? Zero thinking. Marketing tools. They don't want to know how to write an ad. They want the ad written for them. Is that correct, Paul Hoffman? 
By the way, Paul, stand up real quick. This is a guy who's written more ads and sung, had more jungle, jingles sung of his than anyone on the planet. The most uh, one that you all know for sure is, have you driven a Ford? Give him a round of applause, my dear friend Paul Hoffman. <laughs> Repurpose your message. Rewrite it. Retape it. Repackage it. Remarket it. The point is 80% of all business is the same. So can you take the same learning through every industry? The answer is... But first, take ownership of one industry and make it a small, little industry. Grow rich in an itch. Big shots are little shots who kept shooting. Wayne Heisinger, as an uneducated garbage man, starts collecting garbage companies, makes so much money, he buys Blockbuster, makes Blockbuster, now owns nine major things and a lot of sports teams and everything else. What Bob and I are trying to leverage you into is that no one should have one source of income. When 911 happened, because I still was flying around the friendly skies, metaphorically speaking, flight attendants were crying on my shoulder and saying, you know, I got three kids and no husband and now no job and no hope of knowing when to get a job. No one should have only one skill. Spiritual language says be fruitful, be fruitful. What does that mean? It means you learn one new skill every year. We have the Olympic swimming champion, two-time gold medalist. Where is my dear friend? Give her a standing, uh, give her a round of applause, please, because I got something to tell about skills. Is he too? You're a gold medalist too. Two times. Give them both a round. Husband and wife are both gold medalists. Take a bow. Thank you, guys. When Bob and I were Stedman last time before he came here. His daughter is gorgeous. She's 28. She is walking hand in hand down in the Caribbean on the seashore with her, her husband-to-be, her fiancé. He's just gotten an MBA at Wharton. He's a handsome hunk of a guy. But she never asked him a critical question. Do you have a skill called swimming? The undertow pulled him out and drowned him right in front of her. It made the front page of all the papers. And I was the first person with Stedman after it happened. I asked if I could tell her. He said, tell it after I'm gone. But he said, tell everybody they've got to have the skill of swimming. And she is going to be the spokesperson to make sure everybody in America swims. Because I'm an Illinois Council Recovery Team diver since Jacques Cousteau got me diving at 16. If you can't swim, the one who can't swim drowns those of us who can. It's a serious problem. You and I are here to talk people into getting some skills they never thought they'd get. Every year we take people on a Hawaii trip and we take 20 or 30 that can't swim out of 500 and they all end up swimming by the end of the week. You add salt water, and yeah, we bring in the dolphins into the shore, and they get sucked into it, and they start with their little floaties, even though they're 60 or 70 years old. But in a few minutes, they get to swim. You and I have some opportunities. I'm asking you to make sure you see the big... Take off your blinders. Everyone say, I got... Here's the blinders. Everyone take your blinders. Say, I'm throwing them away. Everyone say, do it again. Say, I'm getting rid of stachomas. I'm getting rid of stachomas. Blind spot. And you got to, one of the blind spots is you got to have multiple sources of income. you got to speak. you got to do products. you got to do seminars, teleseminars, retreats. Coaching is a hot area that's gone from nowhere to billions of dollars in the last couple of years. Bob and I say you deserve to have an ocean of money. You're entitled to become an information merchant. And here's all the ways that I do it. You can do it in speaking, consulting, self-authored books, co-authored books, co-op books. You can do it in booklets and samplers. What's a sampler? I did talk for Pfizer. They wanted to get out one of their drugs, which at the time I didn't know had some negative side effects that I'm really opposed to now. But they bought 2 million copies of Chicken Soup for the Unsinkable Soul, gave 20,000 doctors 100 copies each. Well, our book went straight to number one. But I am now opposed to that particular drug. But audio programs, videotapes, workbooks, handouts, custom products, royalties. You want to argue for good royalties, but you can't argue for yourself. At this level, I ask you not to be your own agent. Now, Art Linkletter has always been his own agent, and he is very skillful. When he's walking arm-in-arm in arm with Disney through orange peels, which when I got here 30 years ago, the smell of oranges just wafted through California. Remember that, Jim? God, it was nice. I loved it. That's why I moved here, because it smelled at Epper Vest. It was just great. At my house still, when you walk up the stairs, we have night-blooming jasmine outside, and we've got a gardenia trailing, and we've got stephanota, because I think you and I are entitled to a good-smelling environment. 
I grew up in poverty housing, and then I'm here dedicated to ending it. I'm asking you to put up some of your hard-earned money, but I'm asking you to understand that you make the commitment, you make the pledge, you make the decision, and then you let your subconscious make the provision because you've got ways to do product licensing, telephone conference calls, which are instant catalog sales. There's 3,000 catalogs in America that would love to sell you. As far as I know, I'm the only speaker that went through the whole catalog of catalogs. In the first year with Chicken Soup, we got 300 catalogs to put us on the cover. Rosebud catalogs put us on the cover. I keep teaching this, and I've never had another speaker come right or ever do it. I want you to do it. Everyone say, I'll do it. There's so many good ideas. You write down all of them. When Jack and I, right here in Culver City at his office, wrote down 1,094 ideas in yellow stickies, and then we just kept prioritizing them. They put them in that wow of a business plan. It was kick-ass. And still nobody wanted to buy us because they didn't believe we could do it because our goals were too high. And they said, nobody can do what you guys are saying you can do. No, we said nobody else could do it. We think we can do it because we're a dream team. Anybody in here can be a dream team. When I interviewed Mother Teresa for the Aladdin tapes, she said that 57 years old after she had saved that untouchable in Calcutta and saw Christ in his eyes, I wanted to start the Sisters of Charity. And I saw her this morning on Schuler's show when I was exercising. And it was just, it's so touching because, as you know, today she got, um, you know what the Catholic Church gave her, of course. I made her a saint. Did she deserve that a long time ago? The answer is the Catholic Church won't give it. Go ahead. Give her a round of applause. I love Mother Teresa. But when she started, they said, how much have you got, sister? She said, three cents. They said, are you nuts? You can't start Sisters of Charity for three cents. She said, three cents, and God, I can do anything. I love that sweet old lady. Referral fees, merchandise. Some of you have never tried to do merchandise. The biggest companies in the world would like you to create merchandise for them. Television. I'm telling you right now, and I'm going to give you the overview, high-definition television has just been funded to $200 million. And what do they want? They want speakers on self-help in different topics where people have high-level competence. High-level, everyone say, and a message that is exhilarating that can be delivered in front of an audience because it's going to be 24 hours a day at TV and the guy's going to own a 1% market share, just like Emerald and all the cooking stations. That just happened on the drive up here. I was listening to my cell phone. Uh, somebody I can't talk about yet uh, wants to have you if you deliver the goods. Become a spokesperson. I told you what Sherry Grenadier is doing. You don't have to be Michael Jordan to be a spokesperson. You pick one niche like soybeans and then penetrate it. Board of Directors. If you're going to be on a board of directors, make sure you've got to hold harmless that is insurance-based. Because today they sue people that are spokespersons. My friend Ed McMahon got sued, as did Dick Clark, for being publisher in Clearinghouse. Now, they have the same attorney I do, and they both got sued because if people read it wrong, it says you may be the winner. They thought they were the winner. They just didn't read the word may. <laughs> Barter. I've been on the board of the world's biggest airline. We run the whole airline with barter. It's Evergreen Airlines International. We fly every one of the Aeroflow planes. We do all the Air India planes. How do we get paid in Russia? We fly the stuff all over Russia, both commercial and passenger. But we get paid in ducks. We take the ducks to France, turn it into duck pat. We turn it into pate, get, take francs, turn them back into dollars, and get paid. This guy runs a $131 billion company on barter. I'm just doing the tapes on how to barter your way to billions with Dell Smith, the owner and guy who created the whole company. Stock ownership. Options are what made everybody at Bill Gates' game pay off. There's some people that can't pay you cash. You heard Tom say do trade-outs, but he didn't do this one. Trade for corporate options. Remember, ask for something else. They only want to, your fee is 10000 and they only want to give you 4000 Say, look, I'll take 6000 in options. Because there's no tax consequences until you cash them. What a cool deal. Joint ventures, infomercials, trade-outs has been talked about. Chip Collins, would you make your way up here, please? And would Jody bring my little gift for Chip up here? You're in this room now because one guy was willing to help me. When I was bankrupt, upside down, and desperately wanted to do this business, I told you, I asked my roommates, is there somebody that could help me that is young? Because all I saw was celebrities speaking, doctors, lawyers, and people with some seniority. I was 26. I didn't know very much. 
Uh, but I knew in my heart of hearts what I wanted to do is make a difference in people's lives and get to talk in a consummate way. One of my roommates in real estate said, look, there's this one young guy talking. He just mesmerized everyone. He happens to be talking out in Suffolk. This guy wound the clock of 300 people. He was dancing on head of a pin. He was funny. He was light. He was bright. I said, will you let us go to lunch and you pay for the lunch? <laughs> Chip, would you join me up here? I love and appreciate this guy. There's probably not been a day in 30 years that I haven't talked to Chip Collins, this guy. You all need a sounding board of somebody like Chip, whether it's Chip or whether it's somebody else. It's all yours. My turn? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I think you made my day, week, month, year, five years ahead. Mark's very kind for saying that, and I really appreciate it. But I think the credit goes to him, because you've heard some of his story. He got off on a great start to be what he is today. As we heard, you heard earlier, he had no money. He had gone bankrupt. He had a car that barely worked. He had no skills in speaking. I mean, none. <laughs> Was I funny, though, Chip? He says to me over lunch, he says, I want to be a speaker I've heard Cabot Roberts tapes, and I had heard Cabot Roberts before he did. And he says, I want to be a great public speaker like Cabot Robert. And uh, he, as I said, he had gone bankrupt, so he didn't start with nothing. He started with less than nothing. And then he knew nothing about speaking. He had never spoke before. And he knew nothing about selling. And he said, can you help me? Well, prayer and a lot of other things, maybe we could help you. <laughs> but what he did have, which is his credit to him, what you've heard all from all the speakers and him too, this is absolutely true. He had made up his mind. He had no evidence that he could ever do this, correct? Correct. It was just something you wanted to do. You were down and out. You decided what you want to do in life. That's all he said. He said, I want to do it. I said, but, you know, have you, what? he said, I don't care what it is. I'll do anything you want, but that's what I want to do. So all he had legitimately, I want you to know that's a legitimate story, was a hope and a dream and a prayer that someday he'd be able to be a great speaker and another thing I want you to know, right from the beginning, he said, and he's kept it, which is very rare for people who become outstandingly successful as he has. He used to talk all the time when he was struggling himself, that when he got very successful, he would go, make, go out of his way to help a lot of people. And as you all know, because you've seen this weekend with him, and maybe you know from other people, uh, he's helped so many other people you've heard already. He's helping you now. So I always thought that but gives him great credit. He not only worked hard to be successful, when he got so high, he, he, uh, he went out of his way, and still, as you heard all this weekend, went out of his way to do extraordinary things for other people. So I'll just give Mark a hand for that. <laughs> Another thing you should know which you've heard right from the beginning. He spoke about it on Friday night. You've heard other people talk about it. He had the same fears as most of you did. He was, he was afraid to go canvas. He's afraid to go knock on doors to get because he didn't have any, know anybody. Uh, and he would come back. Every talk once or twice a week, we'd meet for lunch, and you're right, I paid. Uh, so, <laughs> what a guy, what a guy, what a guy. Uh, so, I, so, but he would come back, and he'd be disillusioned. And upset. He never said he was thought about quitting, but he was upset, and it was tough, and it was difficult. And he, but the, he just had made up his mind. And no matter how difficult it got, no how tough it was, and the line he always makes fun of me now. Uh, I think we were meet for lunch, and at the, at the uh, and you, and deli. He, uh, at deli, and he says, "Well, you know, nobody's going to want to buy anything on Friday. Do I have to go out?" Because one of the deals I made is he had to do what I said, otherwise I wasn't going to help him. Which the first day he said, call on ten people, and nine will say no. And the tenth one was an old, lovely Italian guy at a Metropolitan Insurance Office named Tony. And he said, I'll take it. And I was so beat up, I went, you mean this? <laughs> so I told him that day, because he hadn't done anything that week, I said, you've got you to work right up until midnight, whatever it is, to do it. And he always gives me a hard time for being son of such an SOB, but... Uh, this is where I think you need to know. When you see him now, it's Tom Terrific, a terrific person. He went through more, everything that most of you who are, because you, some of you I spoke to you at the breaks, who I've already spoke and went through. And the people who are out there, because I spoke a lot of you at, at different breaks, who have not done anything, he went through the pain. 
He went through the struggle. He had no clue. It was all in his own faith and his own desire and his own ambition. So, as I said, he gets the credit. And I'm eternally grateful for meeting him. And uh, he did have a lot more going from anybody who spent any time with Mark. You know, he's an awesomely intelligent person, not to mention one of the biggest hearts I've ever met. Thank you. One second. One second. I just want I told this at the private dining, but I got to redo it on Chip. Is it when he started, he was the top salesman at Kodak, and then a speaker came in, and Chip heard the guy and was taking notes, and then all of a sudden he was outlining his own talk. Goes home to his wife, Donna. He's got two little babies at home and says, Donna, I'm starting as a speaker. Nobody really wanted him because he didn't know the business, didn't know how to. And there's no training. There's no meeting like this to go to at that time. And he's down and out. And he's down to how much did you have left? A few cents? And he's a couple times. I did, a couple times I didn't have money to get, to get uh, Gas milk, or food. Milk, for, milk for my daughter one morning. I'm at the lowest point. She said, Dad, we are out of milk. And I didn't have any money to give my wife. Uh, and we're talking 30, 40 cents then. And he's beating on his steering wheel, and he goes into the Catholic Church, and he goes up, and he prays, and he prays, and he says, look, I, 32 cents won't do anything. So he puts all of it in a collection point, which I wrote in my book, The Miracle of Tithing, as a lead story, and tell him what happened. And then I was going to go home, but I couldn't face my wife, and I didn't know how to deal with this. It was not, it was just an unbelievably low time. So I said, I'll stop at one other place I knew I might stop and get some business. But I kept telling myself, this is a waste of time, very pessimistic, very discouraged. So I said, well, I'll do it on the way home. I don't know. Maybe I'll think of some story to tell my wife so she doesn't faint or vomit or something. Because uh, so, she was very upset, too. She was going through a very, we're going through a very difficult time. And so I go in an office and, and on a Friday thinking, man, nobody's going to be there. And, the, and the, the person was there. He said, gee, Chip, I'm glad you stopped by. I want you to start doing a meeting for me this Monday. And, oh, by the way, can I pay you in advance? I struggle with that decision <laughs> and pull myself together so I didn't faint right there and, or say, thank you, God, 300 times in front of him. Uh, but uh, that happened, and some of you will go through similar experiences, and Mark's gone through those experiences. But, again, I think he gets the credit. He's the one that really worked hard, and when he got here, has done all the things you've seen. Now. I've never, ever given a personal award before. I decided this one I wanted Chip to fly in because I go into my 30th year in August. He was kind enough to be there. There's never a time he hasn't taken a call. The guy's been a lifelong sounding board. And just I hope all of you have a friend that is good when it's good and even better when it's bad, which is what he had been for me. We've got the first Mentor of Mentors Award, which I made up. Would you please give my friend and a guy I love, Chip Collins, our Mentor of Mentors Award. I love you. I think I think you're the greatest. Thank you. Thank you. Here, here, you want the picture, Chip? Here, hold this. This is awesome. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Almost done. We're tying it up right now. Margaret Mead, who is a brilliant cultural anthropologist, says, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing they ever had. Are we all going to be world changers? The answer is? Yes. Individually and collectively. This is a business to show business. And as I conclude, let me just say that great speakers have had to become great authors. I was a speaker that wrote, and then things got really, whoops, and things got really good, and then I became an author, I wrote an author that speaks, and it paid better. <laughs> Why is that so? Because you can do all this stuff. I want all of you to have a vision of yourself that you're not going to do a bestseller, but a mega bestseller and then a mega bestselling series. Get to do it and create series that have series with what we learned from Lucas is that you do sequels of sequels. And when Jack and I used to go in a bookstore and we saw the Shrine to Stein, which was a goosebump series, there was a negative goosebumps, we were the positive goosebumps. We visualized this happening before it ever happened, and most of you have seen it. And then Bob and I have gone on tour to do you know, record-breaking stunts like last Friday, as I told you, we were on Glenn Beck's show and we went from 422 to number one and we're reflected as number one on New York Times two weeks from now. It's just, it is great. Is being an author a good idea? The answer is, yeah. yeah. Can anyone do it? This lady equivalently wrote at a McDonald's or a Starbucks and she has now surpassed the Queen of England as the richest woman in England. Wrote a little book called Harry. Her name is R.K. And if you look at the numbers on the right-hand side, everybody has done exceedingly well. I want to invite you to our Mega Book Marketing University. If you sign up tonight, it's $995. It's in Orlando. It is next spring, 19th, 20th, 21st. 
How many of you enjoyed going to the private dining? How many of you could not get into private dining, although you wanted to? If you sign up tonight, you are the first and only 50 probably that are going to get into private dining. We're going to sell it out tonight, and then private dining is not going to be available. It's only available tonight. It's only available if you decide to sign up today. It is something I want more for you than you want for yourself. We're bringing not only the top agents, we're bringing uh, three of the top publishers. We're going to have Random House there. We're going to have Time Warner's chairman there. And we're going to have SNS's chairman there. There's no one else that could pull off this kind of meeting but me. How many of you had a good time during the meeting here? This one's going to be even better in Orlando. I want to take you to the next level, and I just ask you to understand that this is it. It's exclusive. It's not for everybody. It is whatever it says. If you're afraid to grow or you want to be satisfied or don't think you can write or get a ghost, this isn't for you. If you want to be an eagle and fly, this is for the special few that are ready. Everyone say, I'm ready. ready. Now, some of you say, well, how do you compare it to something? Compare it to a college education. The cheapest college education in America today is twenty-five grand. When you get out, you're at thirty-seven thousand dollars average, according to the cover of USA Today last week. And you still you get a key to the place, but as a and as responsible employee, you still got to minus your taxes, so you're down a third, and that doesn't seem like good pay. Whereas we've been teaching you, why do you want to do this? Because I want you to understand the greatest amongst you is servant of all, and that I think writing is creating little babies, and baby books are going to outserve you, they're going to outlive you, they're going to outlast you. I want all of you to write. I want all of you to speak. I want all of you to do all of it. I want you to get to have the whole world working with you. And the truth is, I want more for you than some of you want for yourself. And I think that's the right position. I'd love you to come to Mega Book Marketing University 2004. If it fits for you, this is it. We are ready for the song from Lynn Rose, and I thank all of you for being with me. We had a great song to do. Thank you. You've touched my heart. Thanks for being here, everybody. Make some noise to appreciate your appreciation for Mr. Mark Victor Hansen.